Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Spring is here. In this video, we will talk about various kinds of plants that bloom in early spring, including some bulbs, great ground cover, beautiful trees, and hardy succulents. These gorgeous and low maintenance plants are great to grow in your own garden. Hope you will enjoy this video. If you like it, please thumbs up and subscribe. Spring bulbs are some of the most convenient plants to grow. You simply buy them, usually at inexpensive prices in the fall. Plant them before the ground freezes, and then in spring you have a beautiful display of flowers. Then the foliage shrivels and fades relatively quickly, usually between a week to a month. And it was like the flowers was never there. Other plants that bloom in the summer and autumn can grow into that space without you having to worry. With most plants, the plant takes up space all year long but only blooms for a brief period. Bulbs can also be planted in very early spring or late winter, once the ground has thawed out. If you want to have some flower bulbs now, well, we can just go to a garden center and buy those that are blooming now and plant in your yard. Snowdrops The bulb that blooms earliest in spring is snowdrop. The scientific name of this genus is Galanthus which comes from the Greek for milk flower. These snowy, downward-facing flowers are among the first to bloom in late winter, early spring, sometimes bursting through snow cover to do so. They are a cold, loving plant, and though they will tolerate mild winters, they will not do well with a warm winter like those in Florida or much of the southwest. It's worth mentioning that snowdrop bulbs are not so dried, and so have a short shelf life. This has twofold effect. They will only be available for a short season in autumn, and they will also need to be planted relatively quickly once purchased. The bulbs will lose vigor if kept for weeks. Choose a moist, shady spot with well-drained soil. Snowdrops can be planted in groups of about a dozen as they are small. Another plus is that these hardy little plants are resistant to grazing by animals. Crocuses The crocus genus name is very ancient, tracing back to ancient words for the expensive spice saffron, which comes from one autumn blooming species. Ornamental varieties are poisonous, however, which means that you won't have to worry about animals digging them up. These beautiful bulbs bloom very early, after snowdrops and aconite, but before squill, offering bright splashes of color when the rest of your plants are still dormant. They come in many colors, but a light violet is most common. Crocuses grow from corns, and these need to be planted in soil which is well draining and receives plenty of sun, usually in fall before a hard frost. One of the bad things about them is that they naturalize very easily, forming stunning carpets and bunches. Because of this, Patient gardeners will not have to plant these in large clusters. They will usually spread on their own. It's a good idea to plant them in the front, as they are quite short and can easily be dwarfed by taller bulbs. Keep in mind that there are species of crocus that bloom in the fall. Double check which kind you are purchasing. Daffodil Daffodils are an iconic spring flower. According to Greek myth, a beautiful shepherd boy named Narcissus fell in love with his own reflection and withered away at the age of a steel pole. The gods pitied him, transformed him into this flower, 
whose nodding, radiant blossoms tend to face downward. It is from this mythical figure that both Narcissism and the genus to which daffodils belong, Narcissus, draw their names. Daffodils should be planted in autumn before a hard frost, in a sunnier spot with well-draining soil. These bulbs will form smaller daughter bulbs, eventually evolving into large clumps. You can either let these grow or divide them up and spread them around. They come in a wide range of colors and styles. There are short cup, long cup, and trumpet styles. Some are double daffodils or split corona. Colors range from orange to yellow, peach, pink, and white. You can eventually cut the foliage once it turns brown. Do not cut it before that, as the plant uses it to save energy for next year's blossoms. Tulips. Tulips belong to the genus Tulipa, the name for which originally came from the word for turban in Persian. These flowers originally come from Central Asia and were introduced to Europe through the Ottoman Empire. Causing a famous price bubble in the Netherlands, at the height of which priced bulbs were being traded for 12 acres of land. Tulips dislike heat and dampness, but they love sun. Depending on how hot it gets in your climate, you can plant them in a sunny spot. But the further south you are, the more you should err on the side of caution and protect them from the sun's heat. They should be planted four to six inches apart, and if you have enough bulbs, you can make a jaw-dropping display. Tulips come in a huge range of shades and styles. There are cup tulips, French tulips, para tulips, star tulips, double tulips, lily flower tulips, and even the famous broken tulips that sparked the bubble in the Netherlands. Just like with daffodils, you can eventually cut the foliage once it turns brown. Do not cut it before that, as the plant uses it to save energy for next year's blossoms. Hyacinths. The genus Hyacinthus was named for the Trojan prince Hyacinth, who was beloved by Apollo, the Greek sun god. The young prince was killed by a jealous wind god, and it is said that Apollo transformed his spilled blood into this flower, with its intense, heady fragrance. Hyacinths bloom and fade quickly, and should be planted in a sunny place with well-draining soil. They come in a few color variants, mostly purple, blue, pink, and white. They are very easy to grow. Grape hyacinths are not actually hyacinths; they belong to the genus Muscariae, the name of which derives from the musky, grassy smell of the flowers. This easy-growing plant has grass-like leaves and tiny spikes of blue, bell-shaped flowers that resemble a bunch of grapes. Plant in the fall in sun or shade in well-draining soil. Squill. Squills belong to the genus Scilla. These gorgeous, tiny, ephemeral flowers bloom relatively early. Their small bulbs can be planted just about anywhere, even in lawns, and the plants will spread profusely. We are growing Siberian squill here, and these electric blue flowers are very eye-catching. They flower in the early spring, and the foliage fades soon after the flowers. Ground cover. Sometimes you just have a big open space, and you don't want to fill it with a bunch of plants for various reasons. Maybe you are over budget for this year, or you are going for an understated look, or you can't maintain any more gardens. Maybe the spot is inhospitable to most plants. It gets blasted by sun and dries out, or the shade is too deep, or the tree outcompetes smaller plants. 
but you don't want unsightly weeds or a boring stretch of mulch. What to do? Ground covers. These plants spread like wildfire and are usually quite resilient. Oftentimes, so resilient that they even choke out weeds. We will be covering a couple of early blooming and otherwise interesting ground covers, flux. Specifically, this is creeping flux. The genus name comes from the Greek word for fire, due to the brilliant color of the flowers. This wave of color will spread over the ground, and the blooms can last for over a month. This plant thrives in full sun and is drought tolerant. Once established, it's great for filling up empty spaces. Speedwell, this one goes wild. This creeping speedwell will spread quickly and provide a stunning bright blue display in the spring and early summer. We broke one section off last year, and it is already huge. Creeping Jenny Aria. This plant belongs to the genus Lysimachia, named for an ancient Sicilian king who fed it to a mad ox in order to calm it down. It spreads profusely. New growths are a bright fluorescent green yellow, which fades to a darker green over summer when it is in the shade. It is a gray ground cover and stays very low to the ground. It can even be grown as an aquatic plant in a pond. Perennials, very few full-sized garden perennials will be blooming this early. They usually spring into action over the next month. We only have one common example: the beautiful and sometimes bizarre hellebore. While other plants are still cautiously poking their spring leaves out. Hellebores are often already in full bloom. Ours have already been blooming for weeks. Hellebores are an elegant, fascinating choice for any shade garden. They bloom very early, as winter fades to spring and produces flowers in an electric range of colors, including green, red, maroon, cream, white, and deep purple, verging on black. These flowers nod gently downward. Providing an elegant look, the leaves are semi-evergreen, and as the plant grows older, it will send up more and more inflorescences every spring. They are also poisonous, so they will be able to resist grazing by animals. Some gardeners plant them on a hillside or above a raised wall to better see their interesting blossoms. Trees, trees are. An incredibly important point of any landscaper's toolbox, and are often an important part of the landscaping which you inherit with your house. The type and location of trees determines where your sunlight and shade will fall. Trees can also create more sheltered microclimates, or even provide a central element of a garden on their own. We have centered two of our gardens around Japanese maples. An important element to look at this time of year is when the trees will see their leaves come out. When it comes to many spring bulbs, the bulbs will often leaf out and bloom while the limbs of trees, like our maples, are still bare, and then fade away as that garden falls from sun into shade. This makes them the perfect choice for filling in space under a deciduous tree. They provide an ephemeral flash of sunny color just before typical shade perennials fill out that space. This especially holds true for blossoming trees. Cherry. There are many different types of cherries, some of which bloom earlier than others. Some are pink, some are white. Some weep, others grow upright. The Kwanzan cherry, for example, blooms later and gets large bunches of fluffy, large flowers. The Okami cherry blooms very early and gets light pink, 
delicate dangling flowers. What they have in common is a metallic-looking bark, mostly silver-colored, with long horizontal lines and spots called lenticels, which the tree uses to breathe. Magnolia. Magnolias are very ancient, fascinating flowering plants. You can think of them as a rough draft for flowering plants produced by evolution. Their flowers evolved before bees did, and were designed to be pollinated by beetles. This is why their petals are so thick and lustrous. The flowers are enclosed in fuzzy bracts instead of a typical bud, and the fruit is a strange, alien-looking green. Pickle-like pod. They bloom in spring, and there are a wide range of forms. Star magnolias are small and slow-growing, with many smaller, strap-like petals. Then you have pink flower hybrids like this. Unfortunately, most of the ones in our area were hit with a late frost after opening, and the flowers were ruined. There are also saucer magnolias with huge flowers that grow in warmer areas. Washington D.C. have many of these. Pear tree, Bradford or Calary pears are wide flowering trees which were imported from China and widely planted in the U.S. in the mid 20th century. They have since become invasive and can be seen growing wild in many places. In the spring, you can get a beautiful display of white flowers, though the odor is less than appealing. Forsythia. Forsythia is an easy-growing shrub that is very common in the U.S. While unremarkable for most of the year, in early spring it produces an impressive display of bright yellow flowers. Unfortunately, many people prune these shrubs into hedges, which means the flowers get trapped inside the form. It is better to grow them in a natural shape so that the flowers can really shine. Succulents. Do you have any spots that are blasted by sun and which dried out during the dark days of summer? Are you frustrated by plants that wilt away constantly? And are you sick of dragging out the hose every day to water? Well, that sounds like a place for succulents. We are big believers in planting things where they are happy. It's less work for us and less stress for the plants. And most succulents thrive in hot, dry conditions. These plants are what's called xerophytes. They have many adaptations to deal with such conditions, including CAM metabolism. Basically, this means that plants can hold their breath. They photosynthesize during the day with no air exchange, preserving the moisture sealed in their fleshy leaves. Then, once night falls, they open the pores on their leaves and begin to breathe. And lose less precious water due to the cooler conditions. Succulents come in a dozen array of types, and each type comes in a wide range of styles and colors. But it's important to look at which are hardy in your zone. There are a good amount that won't survive harsh winters, but even in cooler climates, there is a wide palette of possible plants to choose from. Sedum. Sedums come in a wide variety of forms. We have a creeping one and a bush-like one. Our creeping one is an Angelina stonewort. It spreads very quickly and can be easily propagated through cuttings. It is brilliant gold in summer and a deep red orange in the winter. Our bush form is Sedum cybodii, which has blue-gray foliage and blooms with fluffy pink flowers in the autumn. They both like full sun and are drought tolerant. Echeveria. Echeveria are also known as hens and chicks, because a mother rosette, the hen will create smaller clones or chicks around itself. This can be broken off to spread them around. 
These plants bloom rarely and in a strange way. The center extends out into a large spike, and then the rosette dies. They are mostly grown for their colorful, interesting foliage and their hardness. All right, this is today's video. I hope it is useful to you. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. If you like it, please thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.